It's day 11 of our video rock star challenge. Today I'm going to talk more about toxic loyalty and the conspiracy of silence. I wanted to move on to something light, much lighter, such as talking about dogs, which I will talk about tomorrow. It's Friday anyway, casual Friday. But this is important. I, it's a piece of information that I forgot about yesterday. And it was a quite long presentation yesterday, so I hopefully will make this briefer. But this is a perfect example of toxic loyalty and the conspiracy of silence. Those of us who were born and bred in Massachusetts, and even those who aren't, but the surrounding New England towns will recognize this story. I'm not going to mention names, but you're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. So once upon a time, there was a family that was, I believe, from South Boston. They call it Southie, for those of you who are not familiar when I mention Southie. And one became a notorious, and I say notorious because he did achieve notoriety, criminal, and the other became a polished politician. There's been TV shows that almost liken their characters to these people. And there was also a movie, The Departed, which many of you probably have seen, that really was a loosely based story on the criminal. I believe Matt Damon starred in it, Mark Wahlberg, those people from the Boston area, and Leonardo DiCaprio. It was very, it was excellent. And Jack Nicholas, of course, he played the criminal. But I tell you this story because for years, those of us living in Massachusetts have heard about this horrible human being. And I say horrible because he was. Now, I have my theories of what created this monster. Some of his behaviors, I'm not going to go there. It's just speculation based on understanding, you know, family dynamics and so on. But how does one become this criminal that murdered, raped, and allegedly also sexually abused little girls? I don't know if little boys were included, but he did horrible, horrible things. Eventually, he went on the run for many years. His brother, the politician, no, he doesn't, didn't know where he was. Maybe he didn't. Rumor has it, however, that's not the case. Somewhere along the line, the criminal returned to the Boston area. And at Logan Airport, the poor state trooper that caught him, mm, oh, the message, the implicit message, message is probably you no know, can't do. I don't know what happened to the criminal, but he somehow escaped again. But what happened to the poor state trooper that was in the wrong place at the wrong time, just doing his job, somehow he said not doing such a good job, he got demoted off, right after all of this. And then somehow he lost his job, eventually so demoralized, he took his own life. His sisters talked to some reporters about this. You think there was any kind of Political involvement? Just saying. This criminal was eventually captured. But before he was, some of his relatives, there was some right somewhere I wrote, read somewhere that he showed up at funerals disguised. They recognized him through his eyes. Was never captured though. If you read any stories about Southie during that terrorized era, he would go to businesses and just really terrorize Southie in general. Yeah. And he also won the lottery besides stealing people's money, pilfering, stealing, not just coercing, using violence. He won the Massachusetts State Lottery. How about that? Coincidence? I don't know. But this is an example. This man finally was caught. The politician who's now retired, who's been retired for many years, also had another state job, though, a very high up state job. No, said nothing. The criminal's girlfriend is in jail. I don't think she will cooperate. I don't blame her. I guess she's probably afraid of her life. And the criminal finally met his fate and was violently murdered. I guess murdered, murder is violence, but really quite grotesquely murdered by fellow criminals, kind of a revenge, I'm sure. And reportedly, the politician and his family are suing the government for not protecting this, I think, almost 88, 89 year old man. Now, I'm not suggesting two wrongs make a right, but they certainly did it, the old eye for an eye. 
In any event, this is an example. People will say it's family. Now, I, my husband told me there was a sportscaster that said family's family. Oh, so if somebody commits murder, rape, and child abuse, um, you don't tell because they're family? What if it was your family being terrorized by the likes of that person? Also, I had a cousin many years ago who, she wasn't the healthiest of specimens. I'll just leave it at that. I haven't, I don't have any contact with this person, but years and years ago, we were all invited, all the women, the men were invited. There was a, a female brunch and she was angry at me because my mother didn't want to come because my mother didn't want me to drive and pick her up. It was a, it's a long story, but she was very angry. And she all of a sudden starts talking about family's family. And so some of the members of my family, extended family of long ago, said, well, no. And she said, yes. And she was very adamant that this is her home. And I said, well, no, I don't agree with you. And I think I may have said it to her or somebody else may have said it to her. The Unabomber gave up their brother because they knew the, the havoc he was unleashing, the, the murder, the, the mayhem, the, the terror. Family's family. Well, I'm sure most of you would agree with me in this case. When there is murder and rape, that kind of toxic loyalty needs to be expelled, exercised. Because that conspiracy of silence is what contributed to more of this man's shenanigans throughout the years. All the people that suffered under him because of this, I'd call it blind loyalty, but toxic loyalty, which fed into the infection of the conspiracy of silence. That's it about this message. That's just another example of what happens when people feel so bound and that that supersedes all that so many more people suffer. Tomorrow will be a much lighter day. Going forward will be a much lighter day. I think, as I said, I, I talked about all of this because of what's been unfolding, both in the world of abuse and then the world of what happened to George Floyd. These things can be prevented, but it takes courage and it takes the ability to extricate yourself from toxic loyalty. That's all for now. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to DarleneCorbett.com. Much gratitude again to all my fellow video, video rock stars out there. They're the rock stars. Barbara Barron, Evie Hernandez, Richard Fabozzi, and uh, Annette Fazio, I'm forgetting some people, I'm sure. Jane Heron, oh, Ian McNeil, of course, and anyone else I'm forgetting. Especially great thanks to Gina Carr to make this so inviting and such fun and getting us to think. That's what it's all about, getting us to use our skills and abilities and to bring forward messages that we hope will at least get people to think. How about that? Have a lovely day and bye for now.